how's your Christmas plans going? <laughs> oh my, <dude. laughs> no. Did you just ask that automatically, <laughs> or did you uh, did you did you ask no, that? It was knowingly? sort of a semi awareness of the irony of asking you that because I know that your Christmas is going to be different to most. Yeah, the actual Christmas day planning is 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 okay. Yeah. Um, I'll do some radio uh, the night before, and then Christmas will probably be fairly muted and simple but enjoyable, and then and then life will kick in in more extreme ways uh, a few days after Christmas. Well, you've got a lot going on uh, in your, your family situation at the moment. I know probably a lot of the listeners will be familiar with that. If you follow Frank online on any of the channels, um, you can see sort of updates with what's happening with your daughter. Um, so we're praying for you, and we wish you guys the best with the whole, Thank you. whole journey. So we're here to talk about Advent, though. The first theme. Yeah, and it's not actually disconnected from what's going on in my family because Advent, I adore Advent. We've spoken about Advent before, but as a brief introduction, Advent primarily is not about looking forward to the birth of Jesus. It's primarily about thinking about the second coming of Jesus and making God making everything right. So Advent begins by looking at the world and going, actually, it's really broken and we're in need of a saviour. So in the traditional Bible readings for the beginning of Advent, it, it harks back to Israel being in that space, ancient Israel being in that space, and calling out God save us. Advent places us in that in that position. And it's really interesting when you think about that because the first theme of Advent is hope. And you go, well, surely if you're looking around the world and seeing the misery and going, it's all broken, what place mm. does hope have in that? I'm reading a book at the moment by, uh, I think it's Tish Harrison Warren or Tish Warren Harrison. It's one of those double barrel you names. You can Google it. Yeah. yeah, it'll go either way. I think it's called Prayer in the Night. And it's all about faith. Sounds like you're loving the book. <laughs> <laughs> I am, but I hardly ever look at the cover. Uh, <laughs> Is it one of those books that you're sort of reading as in it's like sitting beside your bedside table? And, and you, I dive into it every over, now and then. Yeah, and over like <laughs> 18 months you sort of make your way through it. But it's all about the nature of faith when things aren't going so well. And she talks about how many of us test God and our circumstances in life kind of help us decide whether God is good or not. So when life is going well, yes, mm. God is definitely good. When life is not going so well, some questions start to arise. Mm. Well, maybe God isn't so good or maybe God isn't there. And she talks about how if we live life like that, we're really missing out. And we need to make a decision about whether God is good or not, no matter what our life circumstances are. And if you decide that God is good, then even when life is hard, there is hope. So the beginning of Advent begins with this recognition that life is hard. But as Christians, we believe that God is good, so there is always hope. What I find fascinating about that is hope in the Bible is all almost always mentioned alongside hardship. Don't give up. Hold on to hope. Hope in the Bible is not kind of this airy, fairy, wisty thing. It's this thing that is very gritty and very mm. real. So you look around the world and you go, God is good. I see all this mess, but God is good, so I will live as if God is good. So in the family circumstance that I have at the moment, I find that very relevant. And we talk a lot about hope, obviously, during Christmas, the Christmas period. And recently at our church, uh, Frank, we were talking about hope and first kind of disconnecting it from wishful thinking. Yes. Hope is, I, I, I hope for something. I'm hopeful about this. I've got a wish that it will happen. And you're talking about the nitty gritty, the more solid hope that we have in Jesus. And once we've made that decision that God is indeed good, Where's that distinction between I wish that something will happen and I'm hopeful for something will yeah, happen? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. I think this is where Christian faith differs from a lot of religion or a lot of talk about God. We get it, we run the danger when we talk about God of God being kind of this distant thing and we're pontificating and mm. philosophizing about whether God is real or not. That's not Christianity. Christianity is grounded in flesh and blood. It's grounded in a historical story. It's grounded in a man, God incarnate, who lived in a time and a place. So when we get towards the end of Advent, we move from that uh, hope for the second coming and that hope gets grounded in a story that has happened that is the story of the incarnation the birth of Jesus we recognize that God has acted that this isn't some wishful thinking about something that might exist out there this is hope grounded in a story that is very very real you know you said about not attaching um whether God is, you know, how we, we often can attach whether we believe God is good or not to our circumstances and how we have to, like, decide what we believe about that outside of those circumstances. Do you think it's, it's one of those things that you almost don't really know what you believe until it actually gets tested? Because, like, it's, 
it seems like it's easy to, to say, like, you know, as you mentioned, God is good when things are going well. And you're like, I can see the evidence of it. And obviously that's true. And it's so easy. And then you're like, and I believe that no matter what. But then when it comes to your own personal circumstances, when it suddenly comes home to roost, then you find out whether you really believe it or not. Yeah. Because you don't know if your beliefs are actual true beliefs until they're tested. And do they still stand up? Or do suddenly you start doubting and questioning everything? And it's almost like you have to walk through something like that. Like, of all the people that I know who have the deepest faith, and the, I would say, for me, the truest understanding of who God is, are the people who have been through a fair bit. Yeah, often. which is why it worries me when I see young people being appointed to quite important church positions of leadership <laughs> because I always wonder, has this really been tested? And well, I don't wanna, yeah, it's true. And I don't want to see it get tested in burnout because they just drove mm. so hard to try and lead a church. I'm all about appointing church leaders that have a limp that have the scars of life that have been there, done that, so they can actually relate to what people have have been through. I remember one of the most flooring things I... And it was a really simple phone conversation. One of the most flooring phone conversations I had when I used to do talkback on this radio station many years ago was a young lady who called up and she said she was walking away from God. And I said, well, why are you walking away from God? Because he hasn't done anything for me. That's that test. Is God good or not based on my life circumstance? Mm. I'm like... But God has already done it. I didn't, I didn't step into Christianity and accept the Christian faith and decide to follow Jesus because God might do some good things for me. It was he already had done some amazing thing for me. He had stepped into the world. I, I stepped into the Christian faith because of what Jesus has already done, not what he might do uh, in my life. So again, it comes back to that Christmas story. Our hope is not based on whether our life is up or down. Our hope is based on Jesus in a very real life, in a very real sacrifice, in a very real resurrection.